Hey, what's going on? It's DJ Mojo, saving the city one party at a time. In this video, I'll be giving you some behind the scenes and sharing with you some highlights and my thoughts on this beautiful venue down here in Southern California. This venue is called Tivoli in Fallbrook, California. And in, in this video in particular, it's gonna be catered to all the uh, wedding planners, the engaged couples, or possibly any other DJs who haven't DJed here yet and want to get familiar with this venue. But I hope this will give you more of the behind the scenes of what it's really like to experience a wedding, especially down here in Tivoli. And I could share with you my thoughts about the layout, the logistics. So I hope this video will help you out during your planning process. I just want to make sure that you understand what it's like to have a wedding here. And maybe whenever you talk to your your vendor team, they, you will have a better idea of where things you want, what kind of vibe, what kind of music, get a better understanding and grasp uh, to put yourselves in uh, as if this was yours. But obviously, working with your vendors, we personalize things to make it yours, but what you're about to see in this video is Stephanie and Joseph's wedding. Super fun couple, and I'm so happy to have been their DJ. I'll be sharing with you their wedding highlights, but at the same time, give you some commentary of other aspects or some of my thought process that could help you. Put it down in the comments anytime in the video, anything that I could clarify or help you out with, or you can follow me on Instagram at DJ underscore Mojo, and just DM me. I'm really happy to help you out, because I think once you are better informed, of weddings and what it's like, visualize what it could possibly be like for yours, then you can make better decisions and therefore have the best wedding for yourselves. Let's get to it. This is a Tivoli venue walkthrough breakdown highlight video, <laughs> all in one. So with that, let's begin. Hey, so really quick notice, all right. So every now and then I'll be pausing and stopping, give you a quick background and context of what you're seeing and what's going on. Once again, this is a wedding down here in Tivoli for Stephanie and Joseph. And we had about 165 people in the crowd. It was so fun. Uh, it was an Afghan Latin American crowd and they all wanted to party and dance. So what you're seeing right now, this is the piazza. This is where the main reception and the dancing takes place to the right is the bar and that's where guests get their drinks right now currently this happened after the ceremony usually what happens is that after the ceremony people go to the bar since the bar is inside the reception area the tricky situation is having guests stay outside for the cocktail hour and that's the ideal situation but sometimes you know what people go inside they just relax and, and want to be shaded in a shaded area but I, I, an ideal situation not just to volley but in other venues normally the case is that we don't invite guests over to the reception area until it is time to welcome them in usually after the cocktail hour so that way your photographers and videographers can really get those detailed shots without anyone being in the background so how this applies to you this is just me and i'm not the professional when it comes to the photography or videography but just something to consider if it's something that's important to you to get these shots uh, maybe it's good to have your photographer and videographer arrive there early so that way they can really get those shots before people come in uh, because right after the ceremony is over people go to the bar right away and it's cocktail hour and it's really hard to get that wide shot of the room where you get to see everything all decorated and, and laid out for you. So just something to know whether that's important to you or not, that, that's up to you. In September, I forget whether how hot it was, but it was early September, uh, September 6th, 2021. And one of the things that you can see here is that they have this covering on top. So that way it provides more shade for the guests, which is really nice. And that way it keeps everyone cool. The great thing is that there are some drinks and refreshments. So that way people, once they get there, they can feel refreshed. I know some people usually travel far maybe from LA from Palm Springs or, or they flew in you know the first thing they want to do is grab a drink so uh, they can definitely do that and right here just to let you know there are it's like a piazza so there are four walls really um, the left wall you see here the middle and the right uh, this is a sweetheart table and there's like a an arch behind the sweetheart table which you'll see in a moment but um, just to let you know one thing that I've noticed was that there wasn't so much of a breeze uh, this is great during winter time when it's kind of chilly it kind of feels more warm and, and closed off inside here but during the summertime when it's really hot it gets really hot just because it's really hard to get that breeze since you're getting all these 
these walls and, and coverings so you don't get good airflow per se. So just something to consider during the summer months and in case it gets hot. Once it's evening, when it gets dark enough, the weather is just perfect. The good thing that they have these like coverings on top of their heads provides more shade and helps people stay cool. One of the great things, and I'll show you in a bit, is that they actually, for the DJ, they provide an umbrella. Uh, usually the DJ is situated in this corner, which you'll see in a bit, but that way the equipment and gear can stay cool and the electronics won't get fried. All right, so uh, this is the Sweetheart table. Yeah, this is the view looking in. Um, the grand entrance is from the left and then the white dance floor right here. And there's a little fountain in the back as well. All right, here we go. Let's continue the video. All right, this is my DJ booth, uh, which I explained to you earlier, which is, happens at the corner of uh, this venue. And this is the couple right here. Shout out to Stephanie and Joseph. Woo -woo. <laughs> Amazing wedding, so happy for them. And uh, what you see here is my video DJ booth. And I have a picture of them that I got and was able to put on my TV. Yes, this is the TV in front. Uh, this is my, my setup right here with my gear and I'm branding myself with DJ Mojo as my laptop up here. And then I have a sign, a personalized sign that says Steph and Joseph and then their wedding date. One of the other things I wanna share with you is that there's power easily for the DJ, it makes it super easy uh, when setting up. This is their drink menu. Check this out and maybe you can, I'm, I'm pausing this right now in case you wanna get some ideas of drinks for your own, which is really nice. This is the little fountain that I was telling you about in the middle of the venue. This is really nice and who doesn't love water and the sound of, of the fountain right here. So it provides more of a cooling effect. So this is the ceremony area, the ceremony site. So the audience is facing here in the background and they get to see this beautiful view. And after the, the ceremony is over, some people just hang out, take some pictures with this view in the background. There's a bride and her father. Your personalities clicked, your paths and your dreams to find each other converged, and you began a new journey. It gives me a very great pleasure to introduce Mr. and Mrs. Oslum. I want to show you my stuff really quick. This is my DJ. There we go. That's my booth and a zoomed out version. And this in this corner right here. Now most DJs, um, they, they put like a speaker to the left and speaker to the right of them, which is, I guess it's fine, but what you're gonna see right here is gonna be a little bit different because I really wanted to balance the sound more instead of all come from this corner. And especially this table is gonna take the first hit of the, of the sound. So whoever's gonna be sitting here in this area, it's best to have them, I guess, uh, the party crowds, someone like the crowd who's really going to enjoy the music. And they're also closer to the dance floor. The dance floor is right here to the, to the bottom part right here. And um, that way they can easily hear the music and they can easily hop onto the dance floor and get the party going. But you see that right here is the umbrella that I was telling you about earlier. Back there is a power supply. So instead of having two speakers right here and the sound coming just from one direction, it doesn't really cover the whole space in my opinion. I've done that before and you know what? There has to be a better way. So what you see right here is what I did and the speakers that I use are RCF Evox 8 speakers. I love these speakers. These speakers right here have amazing quality. I personally think they're better than the other speakers that I used to own which were the QSC K12s. Um, just for the amazing clarity at louder volumes. These are amazing speakers and I'm still having to this day after owning them for four years. But anyways, look how sleek the design is. That's why I chose it. And uh, there's no tripods or anyone to trip over. It's just clean looking in my opinion. And also have a LED moving head for here when it's time for dancing. So that way we can really create that visual experience for the couple. But this is one of my speaker right here and you'll see in the video where my other one is placed. 
Booth, my right RCFD box speaker here, and the speaker to my left, transmitting the sound wirelessly over here using a transmitter and a receiver. So that way it's completely no cables down below. And um, that's way it has more sound coverage coming this side, and then sound coverage on the right side right here. Sounds really, really good. Shout out to RCF for these amazing speakers. All right. So I explained it to you in that video. By the way, this is all taken from my iPhone. I posted this on my Instagram story. So if you had followed me on Instagram, give you a quick plug, follow me at DJ underscore Mojo. I do many weddings and I like to cover them and share them with all of you on social media. You get to see real time of the weddings that I do and give you more information like this. But anyways, I wanna give you an idea, see how I have it to the left right here and to the right. I mean, if you really think about it, we have two ears. I mean, I'm stating the obvious, right? But we have two ears and it's nice, so nice to hear sound from your left and sound from your right to create that stereo effect, even though I'm playing mono, but uh, it creates the experience. So if, if we have both speakers on, on the right side, to hear it optimally, people would have to dance facing the speakers to hear it. If they face the other direction, it won't exactly sound the same. By spreading out the speakers more, we are able to create a better sound experience whether they're facing this way or this way, it's still gonna sound good. And also people on the other side, I want both sides to have the equal like sound clarity so that way it sounds more balanced and it just sounds better acoustically as well. So instead of running long cable, because as you can see here, this is the archway where people come in right here. So people come in and out and I don't want to trip and I don't want to put tape here. I want things to look clean. So instead of that, I just did things wirelessly. I used a system called the Shure PSM 900, so that way I can transmit sound wirelessly to here. And what does this mean for you as a client? Visually, it looks better with less cable, and for safety reasons, there's no cables to trip over. And luckily, there's a power supply right here, which charged or powered my speaker on the left. So I found this setup to be ideal. Uh, it sounds more balanced. And I've gotten some great feedback from the venue staff as well. Like, wow, we've never really experienced something like this before. And it's just something different. But the reason why I do it, yes, it is easy to just put two speakers by my DJ booth. But I want to put a little extra effort to make it sound better for everyone else. Not just for me, <laughs> you have like just two speakers, boom, to set it up. You think about the room and see what can you do to make it better. And that's what I did here and it worked amazing. So that's my setup here. This is at the Piazza at Tavoli. This is the reception. And right behind is a cocktail hour. And usually they have these wine barrels up here. People hang out outside, you know, and some lawn games or whatnot. But just to let you know, once again, the bar is to the left. It's inside this reception area. Sometimes it's really hard to close it off for the reception only. But, you know, it is what it is. But people still have a good time. And you know what? We're just here to have a good time, really. But we'll do our best to, to keep people outside. And that's why I have music playing outside as well. The same music outside is uh, the same music playing inside. So, so that way, when people line up at the bar, there's no just like dead silence at all. <laughs> they don't hear muffled music. Like I want people while they're waiting for, for the drinks at the bar that they can actually like hear what, what's going on. And enjoy the music while waiting in line. Why not, right? So having music in this area and outside provides us a better sound experience for all the guests, wherever they're, they're out there or in here. All right, let's continue with this video. Cables down below, and um, that's where it has more sound coverage coming this side, and then sound coverage on the right side right here. Sounds really, really good. Shout out to RCF for these amazing speakers. So I provided some up lights around here. As you can see, it's starting to get dark, and these uh, lights, these candles are starting to pop out more. I, I love this time of day. It just adds more ambiance. I mean, you get to see the string lighting on. It's a great time to to take pictures, I think. Really quick note that there, there's another arch right here and to the right are the restrooms. And I put some light up lights, really hard to see right now, but I put some up lights right there just to make that path of just a little bit more visible. Just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. Can't take my eyes off of you. 
So we just have the, the grand entrance, the wedding party, and introduce the bride and groom. One thing that I have also did earlier was that I acknowledged the, the parents before we did the grand entrance, and that was nice to, to recognize them. Uh, for the first dance, they did a song, Can't Take My Eyes Off You. And then right after, we did the anniversary dance, and that's what you see right here, all the married couples on the dance floor. And then I slowly remove them from the dance floor based on the number of years that they've been married. And then at the end, I ask for the best marriage advice that they can give to the couple. Wishing them a home filled with happiness, good health, good friends, good music, good love. So really quickly, what you just saw was the, the speech from the father. Uh, but right before then, just want to let you know, I didn't really get a chance to capture it, but we have this thing called the Afghan mirror tradition. So I know the couples that I do are, are mixed from different cultures, and I love doing uh, different kinds of weddings. And one of the things that they share with me is that they wanted to incorporate the Afghan mirror tradition, and uh, which was really nice. And they gave me some verbiage to explain to the people what exactly it is and how important it is and what it signifies. And I was giving them a, a, a walkthrough of what took place. So it was really nice. I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't capture it, but that's what happened. So usually when uh, it's different cultures, I, I usually speak with a couple just to make sure I understand you know, what other aspects or elements of the, the wedding are gonna be important to them. And we'll see how we can include that in um, and then I also give suggestions on how to make it better so I asked for like a script a little bit just to help me understand what it is and that I can explain it to the guests so that way they're not just watching it but everything that happens during that portion of the tradition or ceremony people know what's going on so that was that and then now you see some people dancing we had the speeches we had dinner and then we had the, the parent dances and then we had open dancing So a couple of things to note here. One of the things I love about this venue is that the dance floor is, is very intimate. Like this whole space is very intimate. Um, people are not venturing out to a different space um, where they could possibly miss out on what's happening here. Like the energy is really well contained in this area. And as you can see here, the dance floor is easily full, uh, especially with their guest count. You see some different colors. Those colors are from my dance lights that I focus on the dance floor. It adds more of a visual effect when it's time to party and gives people the switch in their minds. Like, hey, you know what? It's time to party. So that's what I have going on here. And my lights, they go to the beat of the music. So that way it's it's more um, visually in tune with whatever is music playing. Whether there's a beat drop, it goes crazy, or whether it's a slow dancing, the intensity and the light show um, slows down as well. But this is what's going on. Once again, is an Afghan Latin American wedding. And let's see what else happens tonight. <laughs> so we had a train going around the venue, picking up people along the way. This was super fun. And I love creating moments like this. But this happened naturally. I did not have to encourage anyone to make a line. You know what? My job here is to set up the environment so that way people can have a good time. So the vibes were right, the music was right, everything just felt right and people feel naturally just let loose and just have a good time. So this is what you see right here. So this is what I do for the bar. I use one of my Ape Lab Maxis and just put it on the table. And look how cool this looks at the bar. Without it is this. Plain, but when there's lots of glassware, we can make it like a party. So this is something new. I don't do this to at every wedding or bar. It really depends on who's working. Uh, but this adds more of a cool effect. Uh, what you saw there was one of my up lights and it's all battery powered and it's water resistant and totally fine to put my, my light up there. It's called the Ape Labs Maxis for anyone who's interested. But for this in particular, I asked the bartender first to see if it was okay. And 
I showed him the before and after and it was okay and they like the effect. Um, this is not for everyone just because sometimes it could be bright, it could hurt people's eyes, I don't know exactly, but I place it horizontally and hopefully didn't hurt anyone's eyes that night but the bartender was cool and I think personally it looks cool just make the bar look more attractive like hey the bar is part of the party as well and that's the whole I guess the intention behind it I really want it to look lively so when people go to the bar it's popping as well and my light changed colors but I do have the option to just keep it static so that way it doesn't go too crazy but you know to each their own um, but there's flexibility and options there um, as you can see in this video that it changed colors kind of phase into different colors just to make things more lively but yeah I mean this is something I, I normally do uh, really depends on who's working not just at Tivoli but other venues I suggested it sometimes I start off with amber and then during dancing I have it change colors just to match the mood and the energy of the environment Yep, I, uh, so earlier that was Joseph up. Uh, I don't know if he was on a chair or someone was lifting him up. <laughs> that was really fun. And then I played some Afghan songs, which uh, the couple has sent me. So when it comes down to multicultural weddings, what's been very helpful is that the couple sends me the music selections that they want to hear at their wedding. And especially for songs that I may not be too familiar with, like Afghan songs. So I asked them songs that will get people on the dance floor. Obviously they know more about their music more than I do. So that's been very helpful. And that way my job is to really play the right song at the right time. And I prepare my tracks ahead of time so that way I know, okay, this song is gonna be perfect at this moment. So what you see here, I mean, this is fun and people got down to it and I wanna make sure everyone's having a great time. So I, I rotated the music, not just Latin, uh, but I also played some Afghan, top 40 throwbacks and all that. So what you see here is some Afghan music. So I really like this moment. <laughs> so, so yeah, we had Stephanie and Joseph up in the chairs and this one right here is both of the fathers having a great time and dancing. Uh, the energy was just amazing. I, I, I love this. And I, I think a really good DJ would be able to just be able to mix the music, you know, whatever feels right, you know, and not just abruptly switching music to the next and like, well, where does this come from? but everything just had to flow and make sense and and that keeps the energy when whenever there's some awkwardness in between the songs or the or whatever or whatever's happening people sense that subconsciously and kind of affects their mood but here oh wow it was just amazing energy and they all just felt naturally hey let's just let loose and party so once again right here what you see are both of the fathers exactly and people clapping along So what's been very helpful if, is, is that if you notice that the bride and groom are mostly on the dance floor, everyone is there to see the couple. And it, what really helps is to have the bride and groom stay on the dance floor as long as they can because people will gravitate towards the couple. Um, if they're at the bar, people will go to the bar. If they're at the photo booth, people will tend to grow, go to the photo booth wherever the bride and groom are. So just the fact that they're here and they're encouraging people to dance, like that's exactly what we want. <laughs> I mean, if the dance floor is gonna be important to you, obviously everyone has different factors of what's important to them. 
But if you want something like this, it's gonna maximize the couple on the dance floor, especially if you love to dance, or if you're a bit shy, which is totally fine, I like to recommend maybe the first five, 10 minutes have the bride and groom on the dance floor. Uh, so that way, you know, it really sets the bar up high and people are more are inclined to dance. Um, the other tip that I usually give is like, hey, you know what? Um, instead of going to the bar, have everyone bring the drinks to you. So um, that way we can maximize on the dance floor. Now then, but then again, it also depends on the venue. Sometimes they don't allow drinks on the dance floor, so we have to navigate that. But for the most part, hey, you know, people brought the drinks to the dance floor and they dance. Just a little tip for, for people out there is that, hey, maximize your dance time, you know, stay on the dance floor and people will gravitate. If you see a dance floor is em that's empty, you go to the dance floor first. And I'm talking to all the couples out there. And then the DJ MC will see that and notice that and will help um, get people to join you as well. All right, so we're all done with the video. I think, I forget which, which song it was, but there was some part up here, but we finished with this Afghan uh, last dance song. I think it's called the Atan. Um, i trying to remember what, what they called it, but it was really nice just to end things off with just something that everyone started dancing. So it was really fun and I'm trying to think of anything else that could be potential help. Huge thing is just make sure, you know, your DJ and, and whoever, your vendor team is all working together. It's good to have them introduce themselves before the wedding uh, begins. Because once the wedding happens, you know, everyone's in their own mind and they're just like in the moment but it's good to, to connect with all the vendors beforehand. But hey, I actually pause in a great spot in the video. Look at them, <laughs> Joseph and, and Stephanie, uh, they're having a great time. And we got some videographers in the back and people use, taking out their phones and capturing this moment. Like this is, this is amazing. Yeah, I hope this video has been helpful. We ended at 10 o'clock and received many, many compliments at the end of the night. Bartender had a great time, got some compliments from the venue staff and just a good mixture of music. A few things just to wrap up of like what really helped make this wedding great, I think in my opinion, is the sound placement. It makes a huge difference. And one of those things that not a lot of people pay attention to, when people can hear things clearly, uh, they're gonna feel more engaged with what's going on. And visually, this looks great too. It's not just the string lighting above their heads, but when it's time to party, when it gets dark at night, having different colors make it feels more lively visually. Yeah, music is great, but if you add a visual component to it, I think that works great as well. And also just being able to read the crowd in terms of the music, uh, wh wh whoever DJ you choose, be able to combine music and play music that feels right, that caters to both families and friends and both sides of the families and different age groups. And the DJ has a very important role to be able to read between the lines and just trying to f navigate through that. And, and be present, really. Don't forget the MC portion of things as well. Like everything just went smoothly and just being able to really command a room and being able to lead exactly what's going on. Just for example, what I mentioned earlier about the Afghan mirror tradition, you know, people like to be involved and having that being the MC portion of it, I was able to let people know what they're witnessing and, and you know, you know, tap into their emotions a little bit more so they can be more engaged with, with what's going on. But anyways, I think, this has been a long video, <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna wrap things up right now. Hope this video has been helpful to all the people. If you're sticking to the end, I congratulate you, awesome. And I hope to make more videos like this. Speaking to you in this kind of format allows me to really reflect on the past weddings that I've done and really share with you more about uh, what goes down and hopefully helps you out when planning your, your wedding day. If you enjoyed this video, love to hear your thoughts. Put it down in the comments section down below. Give this video a like. Follow me on Instagram. You know, let's stay connected. You get to see more of behind the scenes of what I do in the content. That wraps things up. I, yeah, long video, I know, but I really appreciate you. You, you guys are, are, are the real, real heroes. <laughs> Congratulations, Stephanie and Joseph. You guys were amazing. And um, if you're interested in possibly having me DJ your wedding, uh, follow the link in the description below. You can go to djmojo.com slash weddings to learn more. Uh, shoot me a DM. Happy to talk with you and we can schedule a meeting to discuss further. Once again, this is Tavoli down here at Fallbrook in Southern California. Great venue. Uh, definitely check it out. Um, all the links to the, the venue and, and the team at this particular wedding. I'll leave it down in the description below so you can check them out. I think that is all for now.
for now. But we'll see you again next time on my YouTube channel. Feel free to explore any more of my videos covering the uh, other weddings that I do. I'm DJ Mojo, saving the city one party at a time. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.